Hey everyone, Chris Stoltz coming at you once again from the Muppet Stuff Museum. And today I'm going to tell you my thoughts on the recent Jim Henson Idea Man documentary on Disney+. Plus. As you may know, on May 31st, 2024, Disney Plus released Jim Henson Idea Man, a documentary directed by Ron Howard, all about the life of Jim Henson. So right off the bat, I have to tell you that it was just incredible. If you haven't seen it yet, please do yourself a favor, invite your family and friends over and have them watch this with you. It is so great to see just the amount of work that Ron Howard put into this to really visualize the creative genius that Jim Henson had. And this is the first documentary that really encapsulates and visualizes, yes, there's that word again, visualizes the creative genius within him. Many documentaries that have been released in the past kind of show the history of the company, the progression of how the Muppets started from the early days of Sam and Friends, through Sesame Street, through the Muppet Show, the Muppet Movies, Fraggle Rock, etc. But this really shows like the creative energy that was going on inside his head. And that is something we haven't quite seen in a documentary format before. I really enjoyed the use of stop motion animation throughout the film. I love how they kind of put the cube into a real uh, contextualized concept and how each little block is sort of a piece of an imaginative theory or thought that Jim Henson had like, oh, here's Sam and Friends and here's Muppet Show and here's Sesame Street and here's this and here's that. And they're all kind of like jumbled up in his head as their own individual thoughts. That was just incredible and a really interesting visualization of his creative genius, as I said before. It's such a unique take on it as well. The one thing I was kind of hoping I would see more of is the later years. They spent a lot of time on the beginning years of Jim Henson starting and how the Muppets gained national attention through Sam and Friends in the DC area, through Rolf on the Jimmy Dean show getting a national spotlight, all the way through Sesame Street kind of putting him in literally in, into a box. But I really would love, like to see what was happening in the 80s. They do focus and the, uh, some time on Labyrinth, the Dark Crystal, and Fraggle Rock, but man, they really kind of just like, hey, here's Fraggle Rock, and moving on. Um, same thing with the storyteller. They say, hey, the storyteller was a great you know, use of technology and his creative genius to kind of pull things together, and oh, moving on. And it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> can we slow down a little bit right there? Because a lot of stuff happened in the 80s. They don't talk at all about really anything past, in, in Muppet movie terms, they don't talk about anything really past the Muppet movie. They sort of skim over the Great Muppet Caper, Muppet Steak Manhattan, Follow That Bird, The Witches, the Creature Shops work with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and using the shop for other things. They talk about it kind of in the end. They kind of show where the wild things are and Pinocchio, but they really don't talk about anything that happened, like what he, that he was working on at the end years of his life in that way. They do talk about, of course, the Disney merger and, you know, they show some clips of Muppet Vision 3D, but they don't show like clips from the Muppets at Walt Disney World, not to mention, except for a couple of clips about the digital puppetry system Henson invented. They don't really mention the Jim Henson Hour, which was sort of a culmination of all of Henson's creative genius sort of at work. There was the Muppet piece of it, there was the storyteller stuff. So they really didn't talk about any of that, which is sort of disappointing because really the culmination of his life's work right there, and it was right before he died. And I was just kind of surprised that they didn't really talk about that at all. I did really like how at the end it said, you know, the characters are still being used for Muppet films, the Sesame Street characters are still being used on Sesame Street, and the Henson Company is still doing a wide variety of productions. I just kind of didn't quite get the sense at the end that they're, you know, they really they didn't want to promote anything, but they wanted to kind of just touch on it. So they kind of have a clips, sort of again, in that cube background, sort of just there, but not really clips of the new stuff. And I really thought that was sort of a disservice to some of the many productions that are happening today. I know this is a Disney production. They don't probably don't want to say, oh, hey, on Netflix, you can watch this. And on Apple TV Plus, you can watch that. But that seemed like just kind of like a rush. I'm like, man, I really wish they would have emphasized those a little bit more because I think there's going to be a desire for people to watch those now that they've seen this documentary. And it's sort of like, oh, they're... They did these things, but if you want to find it, you better do your own research. We're like, you know, it would have been nice if 
Disney kind of collaborated and said, in the extras, we'll link to them or tell you more about them and something. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Plus the fact that even though Disney put this out on Disney Plus, the first day that this came out, there was a Jim Henson idea man banner. And right next to it, there was a banner highlighting the Muppet collection that they have. But then like a day later, that banner for the Muppet stuff kind of got pushed down the way. It just in one day, like it was already like, oh, okay, there's the Muppets is down there. It's kind of nice when it was next to it. Here you watch this now, check these out. And by the end of the weekend, it was gone entirely on their Disney Plus heading. And then when you get into the Muppet collection itself, the Idea Man documentary is not in there. So that's gonna get kind of lost, I hope. I hope it does not get lost, but they really need to add it to the Muppet collection. Otherwise it is going to get lost in the Disney Plus algorithm. Sort of like how Earth to Ned got lost and then got canceled and removed because no one could find it. So I'm hoping that does not happen with the Jim Henson Idea Man documentary. But again, once you're inside the Muppet collection, Disney did not add any new classic Muppet productions, which have been nice. Like, oh, we have this documentary, watch this. And we've also added now classic Muppet specials, which they did not do. So it's like two different thought processes happening simultaneously. Oh, watch this documentary. And then here's the things that Jim Henson didn't really work on for most of these. Like there's a couple Muppet movies that Jim worked on. Of course, Muppet movie, Great Muppet Caper, and those are the only two movies that he worked on that are on Disney+. Plus. The other specials are all new specials that Jim didn't work on. And of course, The Muppet Show is there, which is the only series that Jim worked on that's on Disney+. Plus. There's Muppet Babies Productions on Disney+, Plus, but not Muppet Babies Productions that Jim Henson worked on, nor are the Muppet Babies even mentioned in the documentary itself. So like I said, it's kind of a mixed bag. I was happily surprised, though, to see new interviews with Frank Oz, Dave Goals, Fran Brill, and the Henson children, Brian, Lisa, Cheryl, and Heather, as well as Muppet guest stars and people they worked with like Rita Moreno and Jennifer Connelly. That was all great. And while they did use archival footage of Jane Henson and Jerry Jewell, they really didn't talk about other classic Muppet performers like Jerry Nelson and Richard Hunt. Speaking of Jane Henson, I really appreciated how this documentary took time to give her the respect she deserves for her immeasurable contributions in creating the Muppets. I also would have liked to have seen Brian J. Jones interviewed. Jones, of course, was the man behind the biography of Jim Henson, and he did a ton of research for that book. And they did use his name in the credits as one of the sources for information, but I kind of would like to have seen him interviewed because he's the guy that kind of pulled a lot of this information together that many Muppet fans didn't quite know. And maybe they didn't bring him in because it's possible that he would have brought something up that maybe Disney or Ron Howard didn't want, sort of like the tension between the Disney and Henson Company during those negotiations of Jim selling the company. That's a big part of Brian J. Jones's book. It's heavily implied that the tensions that were arising between him and the Disney lawyers probably could have contributed somewhat to the stress that led to Henson's death. So they didn't really want to probably bring that up. So they just kind of shelved Brian J. Jones kind of off to the side and say, oh, just in case he wants to bring something like that up, we're not going to have him involved in kind of just talk about the Henson merger with Disney and then move on. Which is odd because the Henson-Disney merger did not even happen at that time. That Henson-Disney merger fell through after Henson's death and the Disney company did not even finalize their purchase of the Muppet characters until 2004, which was 14 years after Henson's death and the Henson company was not sold to Disney, just the Muppet characters and the characters from Bear in the Big Blue House, which again, they did not even show in the montage as part of the characters or productions made after Henson's death. I also had a little bit of a nitpick with the ending because they did talk about some of the Muppet productions having a lot of violence and kind of like the, the explosions, that kind of stuff. But they didn't really bring it up too much in the beginning, but it's definitely a callback at the end. I like that because that's definitely a Muppet ending, but it doesn't seem to really enforce or reinforce the things they talked about in the past. So I was a little confused with that. You'd think that the way they ended, they would have had like Crazy Harry somewhere in the middle, like blow something up, but they didn't. So the ending sort of kind of comes out of nowhere because I guess they really didn't know how to end it. So they did it in the classic Henson way, which is blowing something up. But anyway, let me just say that it is a fantastic documentary. Nitpicks aside, it is definitely worth your time. It's definitely worth bringing your friends and family, like I said, over to watch it so they get them interested in Jim Henson and the Muppets again. It's definitely something that's going to be a classic that I think 
will stand the test of time as the other documentaries have as well. I mean, there are bits and pieces of many of the other Henson documentaries of Muppets and Men, The World of Dark Crystal, Inside the Labyrinth, but what was surprising is they didn't show anything from the Muppets Celebrate Jim Henson or again, the Muppets at Walt Disney World because they did spend a good section of time talking about the Disney-Henson merger. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Please be sure to watch Jim Henson Idea Man on Disney+. Plus. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Please be sure to follow us on all our social media channels and I'll see you next time from the Muppet Stuff Museum.